What happens if the world's most trusted long-haul cargo aircraft, the Boeing 777 freighter, is suddenly grounded? As legacy jets like the MD-11 disappear at record speed and older 747s quietly exit service with no true replacement, ready a dangerous gap is forming in the air cargo system, one that could disrupt global supply chains overnight. Now Boeing is pushing back with a bold appeal to regulators seeking a temporary exemption to keep this freighter flying. But can this last-minute lifeline really prevent a cargo crisis? And how could Boeing possibly convince authorities? Let's break it down. The Boeing 777 freighter's problem isn't demand its regulation. Boeing has formally filed a request with the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the Department of Transportation seeking a temporary exemption from new emissions and fuel efficiency rules set to take effect on January 1, 2028. These rules aligned with international standards from ICAO draw a hard line after December 31, 2027 aircraft that fail to meet the new requirements can no longer be certified or sold. And in its current form, the 777F falls on the wrong side of that line. What turns this into a serious crisis is the timing. Boeing's next generation freighter, the 777 8 freighter, has yet to receive certification and is running behind schedule. That delay risks creating a dangerous production gap, one that could leave cargo airlines without a viable wide body freighter option just as older aircraft are being retired. To prevent that scenario, the U.S. manufacturer is asking regulators for permission to build and deliver 35 additional 777 freighters, positioning them as a critical bridge until the Dash 8F is ready. The exemption request was submitted on December 19, 2025, and Boeing is now racing the clock pushing for approval before May 1, 2026 to stay aligned with production timelines and customer commitments. But will regulators grant Boeing a rare exception to keep the 777 freighter alive a little longer? How could Boeing possibly convince authorities? The first argument Boeing puts forward is market demand. Boeing's core argument is simple but powerful. The 777 freighter has become a pillar of global air cargo at the exact moment the system is under maximum strain. Worldwide freight demand continues to surge fueled by e-commerce growth, repeated disruptions in ocean shipping from the Red Sea crisis to port strikes and the need to move high-value time-critical goods such as electronics, pharmaceuticals, and perishables. In this environment, reliability matters more than ever. This is where large wide-body freighters like the 777F play a unique role. Designed for long-haul missions, the aircraft efficiently connects major cargo hubs across North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. It can carry heavy oversized loads that smaller freighters simply cannot handle making it indispensable on intercontinental routes where capacity, not frequency, is the limiting factor. However, the problem is that this capability is disappearing faster than it can be replaced. The global wide-body freighter fleet is shrinking as legacy aircraft are phased out. The MD-11, once a workhorse of the cargo world, now numbers only around 65 to 70 aircraft in active service, primarily with FedEx, UPS, and Western Global. While retirements were planned years ago, strong demand has forced operators to delay them. FedEx, for example, now expects to keep its MD-11s flying until 2032. A UPS MD-11 accident in November 2025 temporarily grounded part of the fleet, further tightening short-term capacity. A similar story is unfolding with the 747-400F. Roughly 250 older 747 freighters remain in service worldwide, but aging airframes and rising operating costs are pushing them steadily toward retirement. With 747 production ending in 2023, there are no new aircraft coming to replace them, even as many operators try to stretch operations into the 2030s. Meanwhile, the emissions compliant successor, the 777-8 freighter, is not expected to enter service until around 2029. That gap is the heart of Boeing's warning. Without approval to build and deliver 35 additional 777F after 2027 cargo airlines could face a prolonged capacity crunch, forcing them to rely on older, less efficient aircraft, disrupting supply chains, driving freight rates higher, and ultimately raising costs for consumers worldwide. Boeing's second line of argument is more nuanced and deliberately provocative. While the 777 freighter does not meet the upcoming ICAO KIP-11 emissions and fuel efficiency standards set to take effect on January 1, 2028 under 14 CFR Part 38, Boeing claims that grounding the aircraft could actually undermine the very environmental goals those rules are designed to achieve. The company positions the 777F as the most fuel-efficient large wide-body freighter currently in production and available on the global market. In practical terms, there is no direct like-for-like -like replacement today. Compared with the widely used 747-400F, the 777F burns up to 37% less fuel per flight while also offering a longer operating range. 
That additional range is not a minor advantage. It allows operators to avoid intermediate refueling stops, reducing the number of takeoffs and landings, and cutting total emissions across an entire mission profile. The company continues to argue that this efficiency gap becomes critical when viewed through a public interest lens. If regulators deny the requested exemption, cargo airlines would have little choice but to extend the service lives of older, less efficient aircraft. This includes aging purpose-built freighters like the 747-400F, as well as converted passenger jets that were never optimized for long-haul cargo operations. Keeping these aircraft flying longer would lock in higher fuel burn and higher greenhouse gas emissions potentially for years until a compliant next-generation freighter is finally available. By contrast, the U.S. manufacturer estimates that allowing continued production and delivery of the 777F would deliver an immediate environmental benefit. Each new aircraft entering service would replace an older fuel-hungry airframe, reducing overall fuel consumption and emissions across the global cargo fleet, even if the aircraft itself falls short of future regulatory thresholds. Beyond environmental calculations, Boeing highlights a strategic consideration that often receives less public attention national security. The 777F is a key participant in the U.S. Civil Reserve Air Fleet, a program that allows civilian cargo aircraft to be mobilized for Department of Defense missions. They are critical for disaster relief, humanitarian operations, and military airlift, and the aircraft's ability to carry specialized military cargo is becoming increasingly scarce as older freighters retire. Taken together, the maker frames the exemption. Not as a regulatory loophole, but as a temporary pragmatic bridge one that balances environmental objectives, economic stability, and operational resilience until the fully compliant 777-8 freighter is ready to assume the role. The story doesn't end that. Beyond regulations and emissions targets, Boeing frames the 777 freighter debate as an economic issue with consequences that extend far beyond the aviation industry. At its core, the argument is this restricting production of the aircraft does not just affect the U.S. aerospace giant, it risks weakening U.S. trade domestic employment and ultimately the prices American consumers pay every day. Air cargo plays a disproportionately large role in the U.S. economy. In 2024, U.S. air exports were valued at roughly $600 billion, and more than $260 billion of that total was transported on large wide-body freighters like the 777F. These aircraft are the backbone of long-haul trade, moving high-value, time-sensitive goods, electronics, medical supplies, industrial components that simply cannot tolerate delays. From Boeing's perspective, each exported freighter represents far more than a single aircraft sale. At list prices, one freighter contributes approximately $440 million to the U.S. trade surplus. Multiply that by the 35 aircraft the manufacturer is seeking permission to build and deliver, and the stakes become clear, denying the exemption could eliminate more than $15 billion in potential export revenue. That loss would be felt not only on Boeing's balance sheet, but across the broader U.S. economy. The ripple effects extend deep into the industrial supply chain. The wider 777 program across all variants generates over $5 billion in annual economic impact and supports more than 100,000 jobs spread across 370 suppliers in 39 U.S. states. These include critical manufacturing hubs such as Everett, Washington, where wide-body production has long anchored local economies. The manufacturer warns that a forced production gap caused by halting 777F output before the 777-8 freighter is ready could destabilize these communities, disrupt supplier networks, and trigger job losses at precisely the wrong moment. Consumers, meanwhile, may feel the consequences without ever noticing the cause. Global air cargo capacity is already tight, and freight rates have been pushed higher by e-commerce growth and repeated global disruptions. If airlines are unable to induct new 777F capacity constraints, could worsen driving shipping costs even higher. Those costs do not disappear, they filter directly into the prices of imported goods from consumer electronics to everyday essentials. Boeing argues that granting the exemption would help smooth this transition. Continued production of this freighter would stabilize cargo capacity limit upward pressure on freight rates and reduce indirect cost inflation for U.S. consumers all while preserving industrial momentum until the next generation freighter arrives. There is also a competitive dimension. In a global market where Airbus remains a formidable rival, Boeing positions the exemption as a matter of strategic balance. Allowing the aircraft to continue bridging the gap helps preserve U.S. leadership in large commercial aircraft manufacturing at least until the fully compliant 777-8 freighter is ready to take over. Finally, it can be sure that few aircraft can claim to have reshaped an entire segment of aviation, but the Boeing 777 freighter is widely regarded as one of them. 
Since entering service in 2009, the aircraft has steadily evolved from a promising derivative into what many operators now describe as the gold standard of large wide-body freighters. By mid-2025, roughly 297 aircraft had been delivered, and demand has shown little sign of fading with 35 new orders placed in 2024 and additional commitments continuing into 2025. This popularity is not accidental. Boeing today controls over 90% of global dedicated wide-body freighter capacity, and the 777F is a central reason why. The aircraft combines attributes that cargo airlines value above all else exceptional fuel efficiency, a long-range capability of up to 4 to 970 nautical miles at maximum payload, and a payload capacity of around 102 to 103 metric tons. That combination allows operators to move more cargo farther with fewer compromises, making the freighter an ideal replacement for older, less efficient aircraft such as the 747-400F and the MD-11. Over time, the aircraft has earned a reputation not just as a strong performer, but as an industry reference point. It is frequently described as the default choice for long-haul cargo missions and has become the best-selling purpose-built freighter of all time. Its flexibility has proven especially valuable in the age of e-commerce and express logistics where airlines must balance heavy loads, tight schedules, and global network reach. By late 2025, this freighter was in service with an unusually diverse group of operators across every major cargo market. FedEx Express stands as the largest customer operating around 59 aircraft and planning further acquisitions as part of its fleet modernization strategy. Aerologic, the joint venture between Lufthansa Cargo and DHL, follows with approximately 28 aircraft while Emirates Sky Cargo continues to expand its sizable fleet through recent renewal orders. Qatar Airways Cargo is another major operator steadily growing its 777F fleet to support its global network. Don't stop there in Asia. Korean Air Cargo operates 12 aircraft, while carriers such as China Southern Cargo and Air China Cargo rely on the type for long-haul international routes. Elsewhere operators including Ethiopian Airlines, Cargo Atlas Air and Kalita Air deploy fleets ranging from a handful to more than a dozen aircraft. The list continues with Lufthansa Cargo both directly and via Aerologic multiple DHL partners, CMA, CGM, Air Cargo, Silkway West, and newer entrants like Star Air and One Air, a testament to the aircraft's broad appeal. At its core, the 777F's success rests on reliability and trust. Airlines have built entire cargo strategies around it confident in its economics and operational resilience. That is why Boeing now frames the aircraft as more than just a product, it is a critical bridge holding the global cargo system together until the next generation 777-8 freighter is ready to take over around 2029. Whether regulators agree may determine how smoothly that transition unfolds. Based on the dominance of Boeing freighters in today's air cargo landscape, do you think Boeing can persuade the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the Department of Transportation? Thank you for joining us today, wishing you safe and enjoyable flights.